In this video, we're going to look at a few quick tips that you can use when using the tracking window in Avid Media Composer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We already have a blur effect placed on this clip right here. We have the blur, we already opened up our tracking window, and we already have a couple videos on tracking. Be sure to check those out first. This video will just be some quick tips. So number one is we've already placed a tracker. Believe it or not, you might not be able to see it, but we've placed a tracker on this video clip. But where is it? So that's our first tip. You can kind of see it, it's yellow right here. And that's hard to see on this background. So the first tip is we can come over here in our tracking window and see this yellow color. We hover over it, we see this is the set tracker data color. Click this and you get a color palette. We can change this color to something that's much easier to see on this white background. So that is the first tip is you can change the color of each tracker. And this of course works with multiple trackers. So if I set up another tracker, this one's kind of a light green, again, hard to see. Let's change this to a black. That's much easier to see, much higher contrast, be much easier to place our tracker if we can actually see them. And again, multiple trackers. We can just keep creating trackers and keep changing the colors to whatever suits us best. For our next tip, let's just grab our blur effect in this case. And keep in mind, we're just going to be using the blur effect to show this off, but this applies to whatever effect you're using for, for tracking, okay? So this is applicable to no matter what you're tracking. Go ahead and open up the tracking window. There's our tracker. And say we want to track this little guy's eye. Not a problem. We know how to track. We've watched those other videos. We know how to track. So we'll go ahead and track it. Awesome. Okay, that tracking is done. Go ahead and close that window. And at first I need to actually draw the blur around his face. We haven't done that yet. That's okay. We can do that afterwards. Got a nice blur there. Select our shape. We'll go ahead and associate this with the tracking data that we just got. Awesome. So now when we scroll through, it's tracking, but since he's coming closer to us in Z space, our, our perspective is changing. We need to have another tracker on there. This is not a problem. Yes, we've already tracked once, but it's, it's no problem to add another tracker after the fact. So we can do that. So that's the second tip. You can create another tracker after you've already done tracking. Furthermore, we don't have to retract the data we already have. We have good data. We just want to track this second tracker. Not a problem. How do we do that? Come back into our tracker window, hover over these T1, T2, T3, etc. You'll see it says enable tracker. Watch this. Turn off tracker one. Not a problem. We, we still have the data and we'll go ahead and start tracking. And now we're just tracking our tracker number two. So you can see it's tracking. It's not tracking well in this case, but that's not the point. It's doing all right, actually. And this tracking is completing. Be just a couple more seconds. Okay. And that tracking data is right there. And we still have tracking data one. See, so pop that right back on. There's our tracking data. So we've tracked another point on our video after we had already done tracking on a different point. You can do that, no problem. Just add your tracker, deactivate the one that you've already tracked, unless you want to retrack it, that's absolutely fine. But if you don't want to retrack it, just simply deactivate it and track your other tracker there. And of course you can do this with multiple trackers. We could, we could have done it with three trackers. We could add another tracker now and then come in here and disable two, and we could do another tracker. We won't do that in this case, but then we could easily come in here and just associate that with our other tracker. Now we have both trackers and it's tracking much better now. All right, so another tip, again, I'll just grab my blur in this case, pop it on our clip here, and let's come back to the beginning there. Awesome. We'll go ahead and draw our shape. Great. And we can open up our tracking here. It kind of depends on the effect on, on what you're actually be opening up, but you can always open it up right here, your tracking data, right down on this little icon right there. Cool. So now let's say we want to start tracking this guy's head, which we did this in a, another video, but this is this will be a little different. Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and track. Okay, we're tracking, we're tracking, we're tracking. I'm gonna hit the space bar that stops the tracking for whatever reason I needed to stop. Maybe I'm tracking a really large area and I just want to track for a minute or two and this track is going to take maybe 10 minutes or something. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, we can stop tracking. I, I just hit the space bar there. Not a problem. Okay. And now maybe we're going to edit something else in our video, whatever the case may be, whatever we're doing. And now we want to come back and finish tracking. You can do that. You can pick up tracking exactly where you left off. So we're back in our clip, back in our blur effect. We'll open up tracking and look at that. Our tracking knows exactly where we left off. We can just come up to right about there, as you can see, and we can start tracking. And look at that, it picks up right where it left off. So don't think you have to finish the full tracking job 
all at once. You don't have to. You can always pick up right where you left off. That's really great to be able to do that. I'm going to associate it with our data. Of course, we need to select our shape first. Associate it. Boom. Now we have a great track. We tracked it in multiple sessions and it still tracks absolutely fine. And of course, we can do this with multiple trackers. So now what if we want to add another tracker on, say, his nose and then say another tracker down here? Not a problem. And we can come in here and what we just learned in the last video, we'll deactivate tracker one and go ahead and start tracking. So now we'll just track these two trackers. We still have the data from tracker one. Now I want to hit stop. Not a problem. I can hit stop Go and activate tracker one just so we can see it. We can go ahead and associate this with our other points, even though there is not complete data. We scroll through and of course we lose it right there because that's where our tracking data stops. <laughs> that's pretty cool. See how it stops. Okay. So now we know I need to resume tracking again. Not a problem. Pop right back in here. We can see from this black line on the top, this T1 track is fully tracked. We can see from these black lines and the red lines that we still need to continue tracking on our other trackers. Not a problem. We'll go ahead and disable our tracker number one. We'll hit start tracking at the position indicator. And now we're just tracking the rest of the way. Awesome. So now we have three fully tracked points and we did it in multiple sessions. Look at that. Now that tracking data is off because as we saw in the last video, tracking the nose is going to cause a problem. So we would of course come in here, select our shape and open up tracking. And we just turn off these points because we only need one for this guy. All right. So those are a few tips in tracking. And one last little tip that is really more about the effect editor than tracking, but I'll go ahead and mention it. Pop in here. I'll just use the blur and we'll just blur her face. Cool. And say we want to track her head movement, open up our tracker. And maybe we're having a hard time getting our tracker place where we want it. Hold on control on windows. You can see that turns our icon into a magnifying glass. Now look, if I click say here close to her eye, it zooms in close to her eye. If I just use the enlarge button here, it just zooms in right in the middle of the screen. Okay. So if I hold on control on windows, command on Mac, and say click right on this thumbnail, it zooms in close to that thumbnail. So just keep that in mind that where you place your magnifying glass icon, it will zoom in to that area. Furthermore, if we're zoomed way in here, we can hold on control and alt on windows or command and option on Mac. And you can see that turns our cursor into a hand. And now we can grab our image and scroll it around so we can find exactly what we want to place our tracker in the best area and really get it sized just right. Awesome. We can back back out and then go ahead and continue with our tracking. All right, so those were just a few quick tips I wanted to mention about working with the tracking window in Avid Media Composer.